I'll finish the last verse. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Chand Jan Vrindavan Dasa Tachu Pada Juge Juge Gan Accepting Sri Chaitanya Nityananda Prabhu as my life and soul, I Vrindavan Das Thakur sing the glories of their lotus feet. It's so nice to have the Bengali here because uh, and that's in Chaitanya Charitamrita Prabhupada, it's word for word and it's translation. Sometimes there's some very rich and sweet variegatedness, which is what I would like to say. There's some very rich, rich and sweet variegatedness in Prabhupada's word for word meaning of the Bengali and also his English translation, each, in, each reinforcing the other and each increasing the tastiness and perception of the other. They're complementary. This is how we see it as a aspiring disciple of Srila Prabhupada. So he's saying Sri Krishna Chaitanya so it's accepting so the translation is it says accepting Sri Chaitanya but it says Sri Krishna Chaitanya then it says Nityananda Prabhu and the Bengali says Nityananda Chand so Nityananda Nitai Chand we have one Guru Bhai Nitai Chand so it's also very but Nityananda Prabhu okay the translator wants to say Nityananda Prabhu that's very nice he's also Nityananda Prabhu Vrindavan Das Thakur is a Nittai Chan, Nityananda Chand. And that's also very beautiful. So we get two beautiful uh, meditations here Nityananda Prabhu and Nityananda Chand. And so Pada Juge Gan, this is, sings the glories, and this is pretty, the pair of those feet, the lotus feet, Pada Juge. So I was mentioning here, in relation to the Fal Shuti, this concludes the. Chapter 7 of Madhya Kanda, the Gadara Pundarik Milan, which is English is called the Meeting of Gadara Pandit and Pundarik Vidyanidhi, and the subsequent initiation that took place, and then the meeting with Lord Chaitanya also was described here, his meeting with Pundarik, and the joyous Sankirtan Mela that uprose when every, that manifests when all the devotees gathered with Pundarik. A very wonderful and joyous chapter. Many teachings here. And Brindam Das Thakur is blessing all of us that have sat patiently to hear it and to uh, meditate on this Leela by saying we will get the Premadan. So now there are three considerations here about receiving this Premadan, which is re repetitious for some of the students, but it bears repetition. That throughout Shastra, and then many Ashtakams by the great Acharyas and Nityaparishas of the Lord, at the end of the Rashta comes, not always, actually quite rarely, at the end of certain chapters of different Shastras, Gaudi Vaishnava Grants, Bhakti Grants, and Bhagavatam itself, even Gita, Bhagavad Gita, there's what they call Fal Shuti, the fruit of hearing, the benediction verse, verses of benediction or blessings, the author or Krishna himself, or the participants in the Leela or the, the anecdote. So these benedictions are there, but as I said, being in this negative atmosphere of Kali Yuga, we have lots of doubts, and we have lots of, let's say, let's say doubts about these things. So the commentaries by the Acharyas, they say three things are required for these benedictions to unfold or to manifest in the life. The first thing is Vishvas, Shastra vi Shastriya Vishvas. Sometimes it's called Shastriya Shraddha, Shuddha Shraddha, pure faith. Which means that when one hears the Fal Shuti or the benediction of Shastra, he believes it. He, re he believes it. Yes, I believe in Vrindavan Das Thakur, Veda Vyas. Srila Veda Vyas, Vrindavan Das Thakur, Aki. I believe in this, I believe in him and who he is and, and what he represents and I believe in his words and I believe in this book absolutely, unequivocally without any hesitation or any doubt I fully believe it so this is the first requisite to receive this prema dan which is what he's offering now the second point is that, I, that my second qualification is that I must be niraparadi niraparadi means I must be free from offenses I must be. I, I can't be some offender. I, I should be free from offenses, at least consciously. Consciously, I should be free from offenses to the Nam, to the Holy Dham, to the Holy Name, to the Vaishnavas, 
to the Shastra. So Niraparadi, Vishwas, and then so we may even say we may even say, Yes, I'm like that, of course. <laughs> that may be presumptuous. But let's say let's be assumptuous. <laughs> <laughs> if we're not going to be presumptuous, let's be assumptuous and assume that we are free from offense, and uh, which we would hope to be someday, some thousand million lifetimes. But anyway, say we're free from offenses, and we're free, and we're, we have lots of faith, vishvas, jada, vish, jada vishvas. Now the the third one is this is the catch. Itcha. Itcha. Itcha means desire. Do we desire the benediction which is being offered or presented before us? And do we desire this and nothing else? Anya Abhilashita Shunyam. Are we, are we free from Anya, anya Abhilash? We must be free from Anya Abhilash, Gyan and Karam. These are basic three things. I'm not basic, but there's everything. Anya Abhilashita Shunyam. So if the if we have these three qualities or prerequisites, niraparadi, itcha, and vishvas, then when of course then someone might respond. If someone's a little fast on the draw, they might say, "Well, wait a minute. If someone has those all those things, and he's a pure devotee, and he already has attained all the benedictions and boons, and what more does he need?" <laughs> <laughs> if he has vishvas and then he is near aparadi, he's free from all our aparads, and he only desires the loving service of Krishna, the premadan, then it, he's already there. Of course, he, that may be true. I, I, I'd be hard pressed to debate my point. But at least the, the commentators on this principle of false shruti, they, they list these things. So I'm simply repeating them for your consideration and examination. And, and so, therefore, at least. At least one thing that will happen from this analysis is that we'll be a little hesitant to be so to be doubting Thomas's. It's called doubting Thomas. He was one Saint Thomas who doubted something about the position of Jesus. So we we will be we will not be shamshai shamshai vadis, abodes of doubt, shamshai shamshai, because generally sometimes someone reads something that like this they'll say oh. I read here in this Radhakundasikam, Radhakundasikam by Raghunath Das Goswami, if someone takes bath in Radhakund, if he takes even one bath in Radhakund, then he will become... So this, hearing this analysis may reduce our tendency to be doubtful. Because in this Radhakundasikam, Raghunath Das is saying that if, anyone take, if someone takes one bath, of course it's also an Upadeshamrita, says, Evas Nato Ravakaru, says Avakrish, Avish Karoti says, Snatur Eva Sakrit, Sakrit Eva Snatur Prima Avish Karoti. It says, Sakrit Eva Snatur. Rupa Goswami is saying, Sakrit, if one takes one bath in Radhakund, Prima Avish Karoti, that Prima Avish Karoti, Prima, what kind of Prima? Gopi Prima, Manjri Prima, or Radharani will arise in the heart, Avish Karoti, by a single bath in Radhakund. It's in the nectar of the ocean. And Radhakund Askam, Guru Goswami is taking it one step further. He's saying if one takes one bath in Radhakund, then he'll awaken in his heart by that one iksnan, one bath, he'll awaken in his heart the desire to serve the lotus feet of Radharani in the mood of a mandri, mandri bhav. means a pran-saki or nitya-saki. So then someone will say, well, I went to Radhakund in Bahalastami, I bathed there ten times, ten years in a row, and the same old, same old. Change, no change. So this is all. This is all bogus. It's all make believe. I don't believe it. So, so we might say, "Well, wait a minute. I, I better slow down here. I don't want to be a. I don't want to be an operati to the shastra operati. It, it, the, de- the, f- the defect is in me. The fault is in me, not in Radhakund. And the fault is in me, not in the astikam, Radhakund astikam. And the fault in it is in me, not in Rupa Goswami." So that we should be cautious, we should be careful about that. Be careful about reacting too passionately or too indiscriminately. And when we're dealing with these very high voltage sacred places or high voltage sacred people, Navadvip Dham, Vrindavan Dham, or saints and sadhus, whether the Grihasta or Brahmachari Sanyasi, Lady, Gent, we don't know. 
No one can understand. But with the basic teaching we want to learn, the most important teaching from this story, well, there are many teachings, obviously, but is don't judge a book by its cover. Don't 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 settle for the cover. The cover is the, the veneer, the external. Go deep. Go deep. What is the heart of the person? And this is also the the sort of luxury of a devotee. The the sort of luxury of a bhakta or a Vaishnava is actually the heart condition, not the external condition. And that's what Krishna examines. That's what Krishna weighs. Bhava grahi janardan. Bhava grahi janardan. Krishna is weighing that. He's weighing the heart. He doesn't, he's not looking for externals. Tila, Kanti, Mala, this, that, the other thing. This is all external. Position, pose, it can be all just pratishtata. Tendency, pratishtata. The tendency for honor and distinction, pratishta. Krishna is examining the heart. And this is a sort of lakshana of a Vaishnava. How much in his heart is he actually surrendered to God? Temporarily due to Prabhupada karma, there may be some repression. There may be some repression of his tendency to love God and surrender to God. But that is only momentary because the play of the material energy is quite inferior and quite feeble compared to the power of bhakti. Bhakti is transcendental. Bhakti is the shakti of Krishna. Sarup shakti, ladani shakti, sarup shakti of Krishna. Ladani and and, uh, samvit. So if there is some bhakti in the heart, bhakti is in the heart of the Vaishnava and therefore he is surrendered. And this is a lakshana, a sarup lakshana of a Vaishnava. Sarup Lakshana means the primary characteristic, the, 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 the real deep characteristic. And you may look externally, oh, he's in Maya, he's not surrendered, he's, he's, not, he's a bogus, this, that, and Maya is smoking, drinking, that, this, that. Then you go down, you go down. By your misjudgment, by miscalculation, your foul language, you go down. Because everything you see in him is like Australia. You know what that is? Boomerang. You throw it up, and there it goes. And there it comes. So you throw out these foul language, this bad language. Oh, he's just that. You throw it out to that person, and it comes right on back and cuts the head off your devotion, which means it cuts your lata, bhakti lata. He who casts words of doubt thus put the light of knowledge out. <laughs> so that's another principle but it's similar so we should when the the lesson is that when we see the Vaishnavas we should just think all respect because we can't see we have to have great vision to see the heart of another person if you can see the heart then you can make some judgment but that's not very easy and generally we are not posted we are not been delegated we have not been delegated or posted in the position to see hearts. Teachers, gurus, mothers, fathers, they have this position. Mothers, fathers, teachers, gurus, they are in a position to see hearts of their dependents. Guru Nishishyat, Pitaro Nishishyat. And their responsibility for their dependents is to see how their heart is turning towards God, how their heart is growing towards God. Whether the father, mother, guru, teacher, etc., advisor, guidant, guider, so just careful it's, it's a chapter about being careful and as far as the Shruti fall then we have to consider these three requisites and also be careful okay this great blessing is there because another way to look at it okay I've taken ten baths in Radhakund and I haven't come up with you know, long hair and nose ring and <laughs> I haven't come up with Narady, Narady Gopi or Arjuniya Gopi like in Padma Purana it tells the story of our, how Arjun became a Gopi briefly so Krishna gave him that form, Arjuniya, it's in Padma Puran. Interesting story. Arjuna became a gopi, <laughs> brief time, for a brief moment. At any rate, that's not what it would be anyway. It would be a matter of heart change and bhav, not external transformation. But I bathe ten times and I don't have this bhav, this mood, this loving sentiment of, of Radharani's surrendered maidservant. So, fui, <laughs> fui. Fui, P-H-O-O-E-Y, Fui on the Radhakund. I have no interest in bathing there. No, okay, it didn't happen in ten baths. But what did happen? What happened? Nothing happened. Ah, forget it, I bathed there, nothing happened. Then 
For you, my dear friend, nothing will ever happen. <laughs> For you, my dear friend, nothing will ever happen now, next year, this life, or for many lifetimes. Because you are a Maha Aparadi. So, be very careful. So therefore, you should, see, you should have a positive outlook. Positive. So I bathe, I believe in the Shastra, the fault is with me. I'm, I'm so bad off. I am, I am so bad off. I am so contaminated. I am so fallen that this great benediction is, is being offered here by Rupa Goswami. But, I, but I've been shielded from that benediction. I've been prohibited from receiving that great fruit because I'm, I'm so bad. Because he's saying that one bath does it. Ordinarily, one bath will give you that perfection. I bathed ten times, it didn't come yet. I'm, I'm in really in bad shape. So that's our response, if we're actually sincere, should be an increase in humility, an increase in submission, and an increase in vandanam, prayer. My Lord, I'm, real, I'm in bad straits. I'm really bad off. I'm really fallen low. Please, I, I believe this. I want this more than anything. And I, please, I must, be so, I must be so offensive and so so unfaithful that you're not giving this to me but I'm going to bathe again I'm going back again and I'll do, I'll do Dandavat Prikram I'll offer so many Ashkams I'll do Puja and I'll smear my body with the dust on the banks of the Radhakund and I'll take the dust of all the great devotees and I'll pray for their mercy and I'll bathe oh Krishna please and I'll bathe again I'm sure if not the 11th bath or the 12th bath one of these baths I'm going to get perfection that's one response and the second thing is Another point is that, that I know that by each time I'm bathing, I'm increasing my adhikar. My adhikar. I'm increasing my eligibility and qualification to receive this benediction. So I'll continue to bathe because I'm accumulating more and more sukriti, more and more purification, and more and more eligibility. And why it didn't happen in one bath? Because I'm, I'm, I'm so bad off. And same thing. You go to the doctor. You go to the doctor and he says, okay, I'm going to give you a little Novocaine here, I'll give you this little shot. So he gives you two cc. He says, is it numb now? No, it's not. Man, what's with you? You must be a real loggerhead. Or... <laughs> you must be a real dummy or something. You know? Okay, let me get the horse needle out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, are you, are you, do you feel it? No, no, I don't feel anything now. You can take out my teeth or my nose, my knees, anything. So if we're really dull and really like tamasic, then we need more, more medicine or a higher dosage. Like you look on the medicine, children under six, half a tablet. You ever see aspirin, children under six, half a tablet. And if you're really heavy, two tablets. If you're a really heavy bruiser, <laughs> if you're a heavy bruiser, then four tablets. Or like this, a thousand mg's, 500. You all know this thing. You deal all these pills and all this stuff. So it's the same thing. This power is there in all these benedictions. This shruti fall, this fruit, this fall is there. But we may be so bad off, we need a higher dosage and another bath. <laughs>